Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our special Noodle class broadcasting live from Ayamato headquarters in Kagawa, Japan. Um, thank you for joining us. For those of you like who don't um, know much about our company, uh, we'd like to introduce ourselves a little bit. Um, so uh, we are a 45-year-old like uh, manufacturer of noodle making machines uh, in Japan. Um, so uh, we've been doing, um, of course, like, you know, exporting our uh, noodle machines like to all over the world. But like, um, other than that, um, we've been doing um, training courses like schools, like on Japanese noodles, um, uh, ramen, uh, udon, and soba uh, for um, almost like 20 years. Uh, we actually have like, so we are broadcasting uh, from this um, headquarter in Kagawa, uh, but uh, um, so we we are uh, but like we have a school here um, in Kagawa. Um, then we'd like to show you later like our kitchen and everything. But um, and introduce our, our instructors. Um, but uh, um, we also have a school in Tokyo, um, which has like very similar facility in Tokyo. And um, we also have like one in Singapore. And then uh, we are in process of like building um, schools like in other locations. And uh, so. Um, today, uh, we're talking about um, pasta, which is not really our expertise. Like, our expertise is on uh, Japanese noodles like ramen, udon, soba. But um, and then the previous class, we did like um, pasta and gyoza, which is not um, our specialty either. But like, so we are kind of like, seems like moving away from um, our expertise. But like, you know, um, we like to do pasta because like, you know, we like to do it on uh, a ramen machine. And uh, we'd like to show you guys um, how um, you know there, there's types of pasta can be made uh, on a ramen machine uh, from scratch. And then you know, it, you know coming from like um, Japanese noodle background, um, we'd like to show like our take on um, pasta, which is like um, we build like the most um, popular uh, noodles in the world. Um, so let's switch to the slide, please. Um, so today's agenda, um, we're talking about is uh, different types of pasta that can be made on the ramen machine and the differences between um, pasta machine, um, ramen machine. Also, like, you know, what it can do, what it can do, like what it's good at doing. Um, and then uh, ingredients of pasta, um, you know, uh, that are, you like, that are usually used. And then uh, we had to um, caution you guys um, at this point, because like um, we're not talking about like a kind of traditional um, Italian pasta, but like we are talking about like um, pasta that can be like made like um, throughout the world, like in general. So the production process of um, the uh, pasta on the ramen machine, and um, followed by like we're gonna actually make um, pasta from scratch on the ramen machine, and. Um, well, um, we are going to, um, we, we like to make like a few suggestions on uh, pasta dishes. Um, you know, it's getting hot and like, you know, come, summer is coming. Um, so we like to suggest like few um, pasta dishes that are, um, that we think like going to like popular and they like, you may want to like steal um, for your business um, that we're gonna show like later um, in the kitchen. Um, and then followed by FAQ session. Okay, um, so let's get started. Okay, so types of pasta that can be made on the ramen machine. Um, so there are three major types of pasta that we can make on the ramen machine. Um, one of them is like strand types. So this is the more like type of the pasta that like our um, ramen machine is like um, probably best at making um, because like uh, strand types are um, very like similar to like ramen noodles like in terms of shapes. Um, so, you know, it's, it's like, it's very naturally like we can make uh, this type of pasta like on ramen machine. And the field pasta, um, basically this is like a sheet shaped pasta. So like, um, um, I think like last class we showed you guys like how, you know, the gyoza uh, skins are made uh, on the ramen machine. So like, it's, you know, probably it's no brainer. Um, but like baked pasta, which is like lasagna, this, which is like also sheet pasta, but like you know, kind of larger. Um, than the uh, uh, field pasta. Um, so let's start talking about each of these. Um, so strand types, um, 
it's like of course like most popular type of like pasta is spaghetti um spaghettini which is like a bit smaller than spaghetti in terms of size um fettuccine uh wider um pasta like flat um tagliati um which is like kind of narrower than the fettuccine but like you know it was like flat noodles uh papadelli uh that's very really wide and the flat noodles um then linguine it's very um small in size vermicelli and then like bellini um these are like really small in size like um in terms of like thickness and width um these are like usually used for like whole dishes okay um then uh the field pasta um for the rainy um uh so this is the kind of pasta that you can see like on the picture uh on the right top corner um and of course like most probably the popular one is like ravioli um so this is like a small sheet of pasta that you you know like wrap your like filling um various types of filling in um kind of well, it's not exactly the same, but like, you know, kind of like similar uh, to uh, yours that were like dumpling. Um, yeah, in the, like uh, in terms of like uh, how, it, how they're made. Um, so baked pasta, like lasagna. Um, so this is like sheet of pasta that like has like all the fillings like in between and, you know, baked. Um, so this is the kind of pasta that we can make uh, on the ramen machine. Okay, so, um, I want, want, I want to like talk about like the differences between like um, pasta machine and the ramen machine, and what like what a pasta machine is good at, uh, what ramen machine is good at, um, you know what it can do, what it cannot do, and I think like the biggest difference right between like pasta machine and uh, ramen machine is that um, the size of the rollers. Um, the size of the rollers are what by, I mean by that is um, the the size of the diameter of the rollers. Um, so the machine that we're going to use to show like demonstrate how the different types of pastas are made um, later uh, has the roller um, diameter of like 163 millimeter um, in diameter. Um, the pasta machine like we found like has like typically has um, diameter of like 55 millimeter um, rollers. Um, so like the pasta machine has like um, the, the roller is like one third of the of uh, like uh, ramen machine. So what? Why is it important, right? Um, so how we make um, pasta like noodles is that like you know we we need to like laminate or like sheet dough um, through like two rollers. Uh, so we feed the dough um, to the like um, the gap between like two rollers, and it's so, like by doing that we are applying some pressure. We apply some force to um, the dough uh, to be processed. So, like in a way, like we are, you know, um, developing the grooving structure inside the dough sheet. Um, but then, um, when actually, when you like, especially when you are um, making um, uh, noodles that are like low in hydration, like kind of drier um, noodles, um, the um, repulsion like from the uh, the dough. That's being like pressed, right? Um, it's like a greater, like when um, you know the hydration ratio like a lower. So when, actually, when you are um, processing the uh, dry dough, um, the uh, the past when you were doing like in past machine, which has like a, uh, smaller um, rollers, uh, yeah, of course you can um, make them, but like um, it's uh, applying like a smaller pressure, like in a lower force to the dough. Um, so then, at the same time, like it's getting like um, high repul like great repulsion, like from the dough um, to the bearing to the rollers. So um, if you like make like uh, this kind of pass like over time, um, you know the the machine like breaks, uh, the bearings like wear uh, uh, out like over time. So uh, it's uh, yeah, that's the difference. And then um, then it's it's not like pasta machine is not really good at like making like. Um, pasta that's like low in hydration um, because it cannot apply um, you know good amount of pressure into the um, the dough. Okay. Um, then after so we after we like make sheet of dough and then like um, to the point where uh, the uh, the thickness is um, uh, small enough to be cut. Uh, so we use this 
um, split the cutter that you can see like on this picture. Um, so it's, it's, it's like a kind of like paper shredder, but like um, the sheet of dough like goes through this uh, cutter to be um, slitted out um, into like strands of uh, pasta. And so um, thickness of um, pasta uh, can be determined by the uh, roller gap, like how like uh, small that we set the roller gap to. Um, and then by like width of the, uh, the dough, uh, the noodles are uh, determined by this uh, cutter, slitter, um, on, in terms of like ramen machine. Um, but like uh, other types of ramen machine, I mean pasta machine, um, um, uh, employs like a method of like extrusion. Um, so it just makes dough like flour, water, and they make dough and then like kind of forces the dough um, out through the uh, die. Um, which has like small holes and then pushes the dough out to make um, the pasta. So um, it's a, there's a difference, um, you know, uh, in terms of like uh, texture, um, maybe the flavor as well, and then um, kind of a hydration ratio, softness of the dough. Um, that you can there's a limit to uh, what it can do. Um, then I'll talk about this chart. Um, because this chart, like we um, use for uh, like distribution, like different types of like ramen noodles. Um, but uh, I, I think we think like we, we can apply that to uh, a bit of like pasta too. Uh, so let me explain like horizontal line uh, that um, explain. Well, that's uh, like hydration ratio of the uh, uh, noodles. So what's a 25% like to 45% says like about from 25% means. And there's like uh, there's 25% like liquid containing the noodles, so 25% to the weight of the flour, so 1,000 grams of like flour, um, so 250 grams of um, liquid containing it. So like total weight of like 1.25 kilograms of like uh, noodles, um, there's like 0.25 kilograms of liquid containing it. So that's what the 25% hydration ratio means. Um, the vertical line. I represent the protein content of flour that's used to make these noodles. Um, so for, for example, like um, Hakata ramen, noodle, like that's green circle, um, that's thin and hard noodles because it's low in hydration ratio, but like high in protein content, uh, which makes the higher the protein content, the harder the noodle texture, uh, lower the moisture content, like hydration ratio, the noodle texture. So uh, that's hard noodle. And then for the size on the right hand side corner, um, there's a size of the noodle. This is like 1.1 millimeter and 1.3 millimeter. That's thin noodle. So like that's thin and hard noodles. Um, and then like there's a opposite corner, um, like a golden circle, like this is like dipping noodles. Um, that's soft and thick noodles um, because that, that's high in um, the hydration ratio, but like low in protein content. The softer the protein, the uh, I mean the lower the protein content, the softer the uh, noodle texture. Uh, higher the um, hydration ratio, the softer the noodle texture. But the, for the size, it's thick, like 1.7 millimeter, like 2.5 millimeter. Um, so it's either like thin and hard, or like thick and soft noodles, or like somewhere in between. Um, but like for um, we think that like for um, pasta dough, pasta noodles. Um, like pasta, right? Um, um, we think that it's like, it should be like something like, you know, the big circle, um, yellow circle. Um, so like, there are many variations of pasta, like even like within the same category, same type. But like, we think that it's like, you know, all, all kinds of pasta, any kind of pasta like should fall somewhere in between, like within this circle. Um, but there are like, of course, like ex exceptions, because like, it's like in you know, fettuccine, like you know, flat noodles. So like the size, the width is bigger, but the um, hydration ratio, uh, like a protein kind of protein that are used, um, is lower or something like that. So like, there may be like some exceptions, but like generally we think that you know all kind, any kind of pasta should fall within this yellow circle. Um, so hydration ratio are represented by like how much eggs you use, like water you use. Uh, oil you use, and then um, thickness and the width, like the size of the noodles. Um, so you can, you may be able to like, you know, describe like different types of like pasta within this uh, chart. And then uh, 
So talking about differences between like ramen noodle, a ramen machine and a pasta machine. Um, so we think that um, within this chart, right, um, we, I think like noodles, like ramen noodles are good at making, um, are, I think have like kind of wider range of like types, like, you know, the ramen noodles, ramen machines are good at making than um, um, noodles uh, that are like pasta machines are good at making. Um, so, uh, yeah, so like, I think the pasta machines are designed to do like, you know, all kinds of like pasta noodles, um, pasta, um, like field pasta, like some of the um, pasta machine has like functionality, like wrapping functionality to do like um, wrapping on the, the field pasta too. So um, there are like differences, but like um, generally like pasta machine has like, I think like, you know, like lower um, kind of uh, the force like that you can, apply to like um, when it, it's uh, making like sheeting the uh, pasta dough than uh, um, the ramen machine. So that that's like how like in the pasta machine is designed. And uh, so there, there's like um, what like what the pasta machine is good at doing and then um, ramen machine is good at doing. Okay, um, let's start talking about ingredients for pasta. Um, this is very important. Uh, we um, consider like, so we separate ingredients into like two uh, components, usually like solid ingredients and liquid ingredients. This is very important because um, that's how we think about like how we consider like hydration ratio, which um, affects the, uh, the like softness, hardness of the, uh, the neural texture, pasta texture. Um, so solid ingredients um, to be flour, um, the protein content of like, you know, like I think it varies um, from like 11 to like 13%, like that's like a bit high, higher um, end. Um, and uh, of course, like the most um, probably uh, famous um, wheat flour that's used for pasta is like semolina flour, um, like double zero flour that's um, from Italy um, and uh, various types of flour, like uh, um, maybe starch, like, um, like, and some some use like maybe buckwheat or something. Um, then liquid ingredients, um, like of course water. Um, talking about water, uh, we need to um, adjust the amount, like because uh, um, good for the consistency, the like, quality of the pasta, like a kind of condition of pasta. Um, the hydration ratio again, like um, like kind of affects the um, quality of the pasta like greatly maybe the hardness of the pasta greatly. So, I mean, depending on like uh, what the temperature of the room, like where you make the pasta is. Um, so like in Japan, like in the summer, right? I mean, it's getting like hot and like, it maybe like may reach like 30 degrees Celsius or something like in a few days. Um, so when it's uh, hot, like, um, well, the, the flour, uh, the solid ingredients like absorb um, um, more water. So like we need to like, um, lower the uh, amount of water, or like maybe like chill the water, um, lower the temperature of the water um, to when you add the water to the flour and mixing process. Um, but in the winter, like, you know, uh, it goes down like below like um, 10 degrees Celsius or something. So like there's a 20 degrees um, difference um, in the, the temperature. So to compensate for that, um, we need to like maybe like increase the amount of water then like, or um, maybe like increase the um, temperature of the water uh, to compensate for that difference, to have like kind of consistency in the quality. Okay. Um, and then for eggs, um, it's like really famous that like, you know, we um, like eggs are used like for pasta, um, for the yolk, like white, whole. Um, then like fresh eggs, like um, we can definitely use fresh eggs, but like it's, it gets kind of tricky, like, when it, when it comes to like a calculation, like recipe of the uh, pasta. Um, so we need to like, when using like eggs, like we need to weigh eggs, right? And then um, we need to uh, consider like 25% of it as uh, solid, solid ingredients and then 75% of it as a liquid ingredients. That gets tricky. Um, the salt, um, so we use salt and then um, it helps um, develop a gluten structure. Um, which helps like kind of dough kind of stretch better. Um, 
Then uh, oil, we use oil, but like um, typically like olive oil is used um, to add like growth, um, the smoothness on the dough. And let's talk about um, kind of what you believe about like uh, flour. Um, so of course, like semolina flour, that's one type of uh, drum uh, wheat uh, species. And there's other type like um, double zero flour, um, which is like um, this like meal like finer than like semolina flour. Um, they like maybe like has like lower um, protein content, like kind of similar to like all purpose flour. Um, uh, some use like red flour, um, etc. Um, but like semolina flour, talking about semolina flour, it's basically like coarser, darker than like opals flour. Um, coarser means like have like well, uh, bigger particles. Like when the milling process, um, the wheat grains like mill into the flour, but like um, it's coarse, um, so like kind of bigger in particle. Um, and then it also means that um, the um, the value like ash, ash content is higher, which makes the color, the pasta like darker. And then uh, the but it increase the like flavor of the wheat. Um, so uh, in semolina flour, that like ash content is like higher, um, like 4%, like, uh, sorry, 0.4%, like 0.5%. Um, then there's another value that we should be uh, concerned about, like when Try to find a good flour for pasta is that like this viscosity value. Um, so that measures um, how elastic the noodle pasta becomes. Um, so it's like kind of kind of stretchness, um, like how you know flexible, like kind of stretching the noodle um, becomes. Uh, in terms of like semolina and flour, this um, the amount uh, this value is like uh, tends to be lower. Um, I guess, and then um, for that the the flour, other ingredients that are used for pasta, um, the eggs we talk about, like egg white yolk, uh, whole eggs. So um, people add like yolk, um, whole eggs, um, just for the purpose of like kind of adding uh, addition of like kind of eggy flavors, like taste to the dough, um, more of like yeah, more, more on that uh, kind of effect. Um, but like egg white, um, we are adding, when we're adding egg white, we're trying to like bring in like this uh, texture, um, the bounciness or like hardness that you get from like uh, egg white. Like when you hard boil the egg and then just bite in the egg, uh, white part of the egg, um, you, you get this kind of bouncy texture like kind of, um, so that's the kind of uh, texture you're trying to bring in by using egg white. Um, coloring agent, I mean coloring like that, uh, flavoring, uh, so like spinach we use, like squid ink, like beads, like the other types. And to color like flavor the dough. Um, then the grain flour, like so we'll use full like rye, like corn, uh, buckwheat maybe, and oil and other types of like um, oil, like lard, and to, to have like add like more flavor, like more like smoothness to the dough. I mean depending on the um, sauce that you use, like you know to um, or like uh, kind of filling that you are um, you know working with. Okay, so let's start talking about like production process. So this slide um, uh, describes the uh, how we build the dough or for the pasta. Um, of course, like this this process is um, um, like based on like ramen machine. Um, and then most important step in this process is uh, of course uh, weighing of ingredients, the right ratios. Um, so we go by weight, not by volume, because for the precision. Uh, or like consistency, like quality consistency. Um, we weigh uh, everything by like grams, and then um, and then like at the right in the right ratio. So uh, if you if you scrap like weighing of the ingredients, um, the rest of the process like wouldn't matter. Um, so you need to weigh uh, ingredients each of the ingredients like precisely at the right ratios. Um, then the mixing in the mixing process. So um, what we're trying to like, what, in this process, like we're trying to like have like good hydration dough. Um, so like we, you know, like flour, like solid ingredients and liquid ingredients, we're trying to like distribute like liquid ingredients, kind of equal to like throughout the particles of like a flour. Um, 
to have like good high resolution uh, dog. Um, but it's very hard to achieve that uh, condition like by just mixing it. Um, so we do like resting process. Um, so we just um, put that dough into the plastic bag and let it sit at room temperature uh, for like 30 minutes and for an hour or so. And then after that, we're gonna process it through uh, walnuts. Uh, so we make like a raw sheet of dough. And then, um, and then for the rest of the process, like we, I'll explain like as we actually make uh, pasta in a ramen machine. Okay, and um, so after the, after like doing it, and then like we do just thin it, thin it, thin to the like final thickness, and then we, we cut it and portion it, and then um, after that uh, we uh, may do like a resting or like in terms of pasta, like maybe like drying process. Um, but like after that, like we cook them. Um, so that's the lecture part. I right, so let's. Move over here. So let me explain the ingredients. Um, this is not um, yellow wheat flour, but like it has like uh, whole egg powder, like eggs in whole eggs in powder form. Um, so that it's like like underneath, like that's this like um, uh, flour, like wheat flour. Okay, um, then this is uh, water and salt and uh, oil. So these five ingredients, whole eggs, uh, wheat flour, uh, water, salt, oil. Um, these are going to um, the pasta. That we can make. So here yeah, we have like our ramen machine, ramen noodle making machine. Um, it's called like Richmond One. Richmond One is an all-in-one machine that um, you can make um, up to like uh, depending on your um, serving size. Like you can make up to like 100 servings of like fresh pasta uh, from scratch in an hour. And um, so what we are doing now is um, so we are putting the, uh, the solid ingredients into the mixer. And then um, you like to like to mix it for uh, just, just one minute, just with the solid ingredients, um, because you want to make sure that, especially like in this um, recipe, like we have a whole egg powder, and a powder is in powder form, um, that tends to have like be like moist, like has like some like um, moisture in it. Um, so we want to like kind of break them and like kind of, um, kind of mingle well, like with the flour. Okay, and then uh, we want to dissolve the salt to the water or dissolve the salt in the water, right? Yeah, make sure that salt is like all um, dissolved in the water like thoroughly before uh, we add it to the flour in the mixing. And we, we talked about, so like salt and oil, water. So we consider them as um, liquid ingredients, right? Um, then uh, we, we can add like oil, like directly onto, into uh, the flour. That's okay. And then, then we'd like to add water, uh, salted water um, in there, like onto the uh, mixing lid, which has these like small holes so that like this this liquid is like kind of dripping through to the uh, through the holes um, to be added to the flour like little by little, um, so that you know we don't want to add like all the water water at once um, to ensure that um, for ensure like um, good hydration of the dough. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, we can just keep watching this uh, how like remixing, um, like how like you know flower is like kind of getting mixed up like in well like for hours, but like you know we don't have that much time. So let's start um, doing the uh, next process. Um, so we prepare this dough, um, and then hydration ratio of this dough. Um, this is exactly the uh, same um, ingredients that we had we did like just now, but like hydration ratio of this dough is like 34 um, percent. The uh, so we we consider like salt and oil to be like liquid ingredients. So the 34 percent include um, the amount of uh, salt, the amount of oil, and then the amount of water. Um, so for the first step, this process, um, so what we are trying to do is that we are um, making a um, uh, rough sheet of dough by uh, feeding these uh, crumbles of like dough into the rollers. And then, um, so we wind it, wind this like um, dough sheet like onto the rolling pin, so that rolling pin like kind of winds it automatically. So you see this size of uh, chunks of this dough. Um, so it's like this is like 34%. And then um, as you could see, um, so we rested it. We rested this uh, dough by uh, putting it into the plastic bag and like uh, let it sit at room temperature um, for about an hour. Um, so um, yeah, the liquid. Um, has been like sort of like distributed like throughout like um, each of the five particles and then um, so it's very um, well the hydration is like very well balanced at this point and then like so we and then uh, we are feeding it to the rollers um, which is uh, actually set to um, the first um, initial um, the roller setting for this uh, dough uh, is like 1.5 millimeter. So this, um, this kind of like dough uh, hydration ratio um, we consider as the uh, medium hydration ratio dough. So um, usually we start from like 1.5 millimeter. Uh, because the chunks of uh, the size of dough is um, that that uh, it's kind of like medium size, like that's like kind of um, big enough, like small enough to um, go into the uh, 1.5 millimeter of like roller gap. So the initial roller gap was like 1.5 millimeter, and as you can kind of see. Um, the dough that came out um, is still like some kind of fragile, like and you know, like um, maybe you can just kind of easily like tear it up like by your hand. Um, so you know, it's not it's not um, yet um, I think like like good in like terms of, like texture. So uh, what we're gonna do is like we want to like separate it into like two separate sheets of dough and then uh, combine them through. Uh, the rollers, so we want to like separate like into like about half, and then um, uh, feed it, feed them to the rollers at the same time, right? And when we're doing it, like, um, so we want to, like, we want, we don't want to um, apply the uh, too strong pressure like at the time. So like we want to um, apply this rule uh, of like 70% rule. Um, so the initially, like the dough, like went through like 1.5 millimeter. 
So, uh, you know, the each of the uh, dough is um, separated dough like 1.5 millimeter um, thickness. Um, so we separate them and then like combine them, right? So there are two separate sheets like going in, each of which is like 1.5 millimeter thickness. Uh, so they're supposedly like supposed to be like free, equivalent of like 3.0 millimeter of like dough is going in to the roller. Um, so we want to like apply this 70% rule, um, 0.7 times like 3.0 millimeter, 3.1 millimeter. Um, but like we want to round it down to like two millimeter. Um, so that's the roller gap we are, we set now. So the dough that's um, coming out right now um, is supposed to be um, 2.0 millimeter in thickness now. And um, as as you can almost see, um, the uh, the surface of the dough is like uh, a lot smoother than before. Um, that's the sign that um, the the gluten structure inside the dough is uh, getting stronger. Um, and then uh, so that dough itself is um, um, is uh, like getting like better types of texture. And um, at this point, um, you want to go uh, slow. You want to go slower um, to make sure that we're applying um, um, big enough pressure to the dough. And um, usually, we um, want to like go through this process, like um, we call like combining process, um, one to two times, and for this batch, like we want to do do one more time um, to make sure that um, the gluten um, in dough um, is like developed well enough, strong enough. Um, so that was like two millimeter. Remember the 70 per, um, percent rule. Uh, so two millimeter, two millimeter each dough is like two millimeter. So two plus two, four. And four times like 70 percent, 0.7, and um, that's 2.8. But uh, for the sake of simplicity, we want to run it up, up to um, 3.0. So we set the roller gap to um, 3.0 millimeter. And uh, from this point on, um, we want to dust this dough um, because you know, we don't want to we don't want it to stick together. Up to combining process, we want them to stick together. But like from this point on, um, we don't want, want them to stick together. So like we we are dusting it, and um, and you can control the amount of dusting. Um, so if you're making um, like Wetter pasta, like um, the pasta that has like higher hydration ratio, um, we want to dust it more. So you can control the like uh, dusting volume. The touch of button. Okay, and um, so after combining, um, we can go um, faster. So you can you can control like rolling speed to go faster um, because like after combining second combining process, the the dough um, itself like kind of in terms of texture is like complete. So we can go faster the thinning process. And again, like remember the seventy percent rule. Um, so that was. Um, three millimeter roller gap like in the main through. So um, we want to apply 70% roll uh, three times, 0 0.7, 2.8, I mean, uh, sorry, 2.1. Um, so two point, rounded down to 2.0. So like that's the roller gap we set it at. So at this point, like, all you have to do is just um, thin the dough to the final thickness. 
So depending on what kind of um, pasta you're making, um, you know, you, you determine the, uh, the final thickness for the kind of pasta you're making or cutting. And um, in a minute, um, I want to show you guys um, different types of like slitters, slitter cutters we have, uh, different sizes, different shapes. So that was like two millimeter roller gap like this, so it like went through and um, or uh, or like when we measure the like actual thickness, um, that's 2.6-ish. Uh, so like there's a difference of like uh, discrepancy of 0.65 millimeter um, from the roller gap like 2.0 millimeter. So the actual thickness of dough is always bigger than the roller gap we set it at um, because um, the dough um, bounces back all the time. So um, you need to um, measure the actual thickness to be able to um, or get the final thickness of your pasta right. Okay, so um, after uh, the is like going through like roller gap like 1.5 millimeter, um, that's now. Um, I think uh, we can start cutting it out to um, different sizes, like different shapes. And uh, so this time around, like I'd like to show you guys like um, a few few different uh, sizes, like shapes um, or pasta using the same dough. So after it's gone through 1.5 millimeter of like roller gap, the actual thickness turns out to be 1.98-ish. Um, so like there's like discrepancy of like 0.4 millimeter between actual thickness and uh, roller gap. Then um, the final thickness, um, or um, some type of pasta that we're gonna cut is um, yeah. So you know, it's like um, we need to calculate the difference, and then like one point uh, that was like one point nine ish. So um, the uh, we are aiming it at like to uh, one one point seven millimeter for the final thickness. So we set that. Right now, set the roller gap to um, 1.2 millimeter to get the final thickness of about 1.7. And uh, I set in the uh, conveyor belt and um, putting the, uh, the sweeter cutter. And this is the uh, Number 16, like round cutter, round shape cutter. So number 16 means um, that's about 2.0 millimeter in width, but like it's in, like in round shape. Okay, um, let's start cutting. And um, you can change the like length, length of the noodle 
um, that um, changes the uh, the serving size of a pasta. Okay, let's save the dough for um, other cutters. So you can easily like change the like length of noodle, like length of pasta, um, to uh, for different serving sizes. Okay, um, let's do another size or shape. Um, this is um, like a special cutter we have um, that that's like really wide. Um, so actually, each pasta sheet would be um, seven centimeters wide. Okay, let's see like how it comes out. So you get like this type of like sheet pasta, sheet shaped pasta. Um, so you can use um, this as like uh, ravioli, like or tortellini, um, like or um, even like even like lasagna. Let's do another cutter. Uh, that's like this is like really small in size, like. Number 22 um, is also like a round cutter. And because it's round cutter, um, unlike um, the square shape cutter, uh, the size, size of the pasta like kind of feel, feel like smaller than 1.4 millimeter. Okay, let's try that. And and we think that this this type of size this uh, this size um, like thickness like width um, the noodle pasta would be like really good for um, kind of cold dish so like um, maybe like capellini like um, you know other types of like pasta. <laughs> Okay, um, we'll do one more um, size. So for this pasta, um, for this size, like we'll uh, actually show it to you guys later in the kitchen uh, on the, um, the dish like we we we're, we're suggesting. It will just do like one more size, and then that's um, like a, we call it like a number ten cutter. Um, that's um, three millimeter in width. So it's gonna be like uh, wide noodle, like flat noodles. Um, I think it's I think it's it's, uh, it's gonna be like a bit too narrow, like to be called like fettuccine, but like. Um, but I, you know, it's it's a flat noodle that's um, it's a good size um, pasta. Just a little bit of um, dough left, so it's not gonna be like a lot of uh, this type of pasta. But you get the idea. Um, Okay, so that was, um, so we made um, four different types of like, four different shapes, like sizes of pasta, like out of uh, same dough. And um, 
it's, it's very uh, interesting how like different sizes, like different shapes um, change the texture, like even like flavor, like taste, like dramatically, like when, you know, they're cooked into the pasta and then like um, put on a dish, like plate, and then like, you know, combined with like, different types of sauces. Uh, it's amazing. Um, so let me show you um, some of the pasta that we made. Um, that's yesterday. Um, <clears throat> so it's different sizes, but like this is a round shaped, round shaped cutter, like num number 18, number 22. Yeah, so that's this is a square, number 20, like 1.5 millimeter. Um, it has flat noodle, like number six square. Uh, that's five millimeter. Um, that's number three square, like that's like 10 millimeter uh, width. Flat noodles, and then like there are various types of like uh, sheet pasta that we could use for uh, peeled pasta, um, baked pasta, and different types. Um, um, this is like number one square cutter, like so that's like 30 millimeter width. Um, maybe like these is like, these are used as like pappardelle or some, some other types of pasta. Um, number six again, and then number 10. Um, so we, we uh, did like with like diff, um, three different dough, types of dough, um, different re recipes, um, or like it's very easy um, to make um, different types of pasta like these um, in the ramen machine. Okay, um, so let us take a, um, let us like uh, get prepared to uh, move to our kitchen uh, where um, you know, our instructors are waiting standing by. Okay, so it's our kitchen. Um, uh, this is where we conduct our like uh, cooking part of the uh, uh, ramen school, like udon school. And um, it's uh, basically like um, designed for um, up to like eight people, eight students. And then we have, um, today we have like three uh, instructors uh, standing by. And um, so we have uh, like different equipment, um, especially like these um, induction cookers we have are like used for like um, cooking the broth. Um, so we have like 10 big induction cookers, um, each of which is gonna cook like um, different um, ingredients. Uh, for example, uh, pork backbone, like whole chicken, uh, you know, chicken bones, like and then we have like light version of it, like heavy version of it. Um, so each pot is going to like cook like um, unique, like different ingredients uh, individually. So um, the students can taste like how the like each ingredient like tastes. And then um, later, like they can combine them together. Um, so they can learn the basics, like how to cook like, um, you know, each uh, ingredients like in the broth, like properly. And then um, how to uh, make um, tare, the, um, which is like um, the, uh, the the sauce that like determines the taste of the broth. Like we're gonna show you like shio uh, miso uh, from scratch. Like we make like um, 50 of them like from scratch, like in each class. And like flavor oil, uh, that's another component for our ramen soup. And then that's you know we make like. Um, 30 of them, 40 of them, like from scratch, and we all like we show them how to make them. But like basically, like we we um, help like each students like you know he who has like his own idea of like what kind of ramen they want to make. So we want to help um, them um, reach their final like recipes um, through this uh, course. And uh, yes, yeah, so we we reopened it um, uh, like uh, last month, and so. Um, 
yeah, as soon as like travel ban is like lifted, like you know, you guys can visit us and like for and join us for the school. But like uh, until then, like um, you know, uh, we hope you guys will uh, be able to like kind of or stay in touch and like you know, uh, keep asking us questions. Um, okay, let me um, introduce our instructors for standing by today. Um, so, Mr. Ikeda, uh, the chief instructor of this school, like he's been like he has like deep uh, knowledge in the background of like in you know, Chinese cuisine, which is like was like similar to like ramen. Um, and he teaches the uh, Udon School, like ramen school here in Kagawa quarter. Um, so for those really, like who have, want to do, uh, who want to like ask him questions, uh, please feel free to do so. Um, then the, Mr. Sun, uh, he recently joined us. Um, uh, he is fluent in Chinese, and then uh, he, uh, well, he recently joined us, but like he has a pretty good potential. Like he's been well trained. Um, so for those of you like who are, you know, who uh, want to communicate in Chinese, like you can uh, feel free to ask him questions. Um, Mr. Takeuchi, like he's from uh, Vancouver, Canada. Um, he's a native speaker of English, and uh, he's been like well trained, like in like ha having like. Uh, Japanese cuisine background, uh, so very good like knife skills. Um, so he uh, is a uh, like call him Thomas, and then he's uh, going to uh, show us um, how to put together like um, then want to suggest like few um, examples of like uh, uh, pasta dishes today. Okay, thank you, Akira. Uh, once again, this is Thomas. Uh, I'm one of the instructors at the Yamato Noodle School. And I teach uh, udon school, ramen school, and soba school. Um, so I'm not a professional in pasta, but today uh, we'll show you some of our take on pasta. So we're going to show you some of the Japanese style pasta uh, that's popular in Japan. Um, first one is going to be mentaiko cream pasta. So it uses uh, mentaiko, which is cod roll, uh, cured with salt and chili, and with this pack with umami, so it's great with creams and pasta. So the second one is olive oil pasta, but it's seasoned with soy sauce, so it gives that Japanese uh, taste to it. And the third one is cold pasta. Uh, I'm going to put in some prawns and tuna sashimi in it as well. Okay, so first I want to explain the three types of pasta we're going to use today. So we have three different types of pasta right here. Uh, we have the flat pasta. In the middle, uh, we have the spaghetti. And on the right, we have the thinner pasta. We're going to use this for cold pasta. <clears throat> so I want to first start off with uh, making mentaiko cream pasta. So I'm going to use the spaghetti. And we're going to boil these for three minutes. And I have the pot boiling. And make sure to have salt in here. I like to put in 1%. So I have 5 liters of water, so I have 50 grams of salt in here. Okay. And we're going to cook this for 3 minutes. So a great thing about fresh pasta is that boiling time is a lot shorter. Uh, dry pasta is probably going to take probably like 11 or 12 minutes. This one's going to take three minutes to boil. So we're going to let this um, boil, and let's move on to making the sauce part. So for people that don't know what mentaiko is, this is mentaiko, and it's cod roll. It's cured with salt and pepper, uh, chili pepper, sorry. So it's salty and spicy, but it's packed with umami. And people like to pair this with rice, but it goes well with pasta as well. So but to use these, first thing you have to do is take off the membrane. There's a membrane around the eggs. So I'm going to use the back part of the knife to just take out the inside. And you'll have this membrane 
that's unpleasant to eat, so you want to remove this. So that's around 30 grams of mentaiko. And cream, I have 70 grams of cream. And salt. And to make the sauce rich, I'm gonna put some butter in it. And don't worry, uh, the butter is solid right now, but uh, once the hot pasta goes in, it's gonna melt and some black pepper. So just like this. And we're, once the pasta is boiled, we're going to put it in here and mix it well and plate it onto the plate. Okay. Make sure to have the pasta moving around in that boiling water freely so that uh, the pasta is going to be boiled uh, consistently. 10 more seconds. For this pasta, make sure to strain out all the water and into this mentaiko cream sauce and mix it well. You want to mix it well so that the starch from the pasta goes into the sauce and it thickens the sauce. So the butter is completely melted and it's um, nicely mixed. So now I want to plate this onto this dish and I'm going to plate it nicely using a tongue and a ladle. the remaining sauce on the pasta. And for the toppings, we have seaweed and some finely chopped up uh, shiso leaves. And shiso leaves is like kind of like um, basil or parsley. Uh, it's often used for ja Japanese cuisine, and it has a unique taste, and it's hard to explain the taste so, uh, unless you try it. And it just has a slight minty taste to it, and it just goes well with Japanese cuisine. So first, I'm going to garnish the top with some seaweed. And, and some shiso leaves on the top. So this is... I'm sure this is one of the staple uh, Japanese pasta, mentaiko cream pasta. It's great. Um, first of all, the taste. Uh, the main, mainly, it tastes. The taste comes from mentaiko. Uh, mentaiko is packed with umami and it's salty and it's, it has a little uh, kick to it. But the cream kind of like covers that saltiness and um, spiciness, and it makes it mild so everyone can enjoy it. And the butter makes the sauce really rich. And the pasta itself, it's chewy, yet it still has a bite to it. <clears throat> and pasta itself, it's like very rich, but the shiso leaves, it kind of like the minty taste of the shiso leaves, it gives like a nice ref refreshing taste so you can enjoy the pasta until the end. So this is how to make mentaiko cream pasta.
Hey, next, uh, I want to move on to the olive oil pasta with seasoned with soy sauce. So, of course, we're going to be using the, the flat noodles, and we're going to be cooking this for four minutes. But uh, I want to cook these for three minutes in the pot, and we're going to cook the remaining one minute in the pan. So, we're going to put in the pasta and set the timer for three minutes. And I'm going to heat up the pan and put some olive oil. The next bacon. And this gives a nice umami to the pasta. And we're going to cook this bacon until it's like slightly brown. So the bacon is slightly colored, so now I'm going to put in the garlic. Slice garlic. And we're going to cook the garlic, not until like it's brown. Um, I just want to cook the garlic so it's not raw. Okay. Next, shimeji mushroom. This gives a nice flavor to the pasta and also a nice texture. And lastly, spinach. And I want to season it with salt and pepper and some soy sauce. I'm just going to move this to the side. So the pasta is boiled. For this one, don't worry about straining out the water too much. We want that boiling water into the pan as well. So like this, we're going to take some of the boiling water and And the reason is because the boiling water has some starch from the pasta and the uh, the starch kind of helps emulsify the sauce. So just like this, uh, now the pasta is ready to be plated. So
And once again, for this one, I'm going to garnish the top with some seaweed and some shiso leaves. I got some sauce on the side, so I'm just going to wipe that off. So this is olive oil pasta uh, seasoned with soy sauce. So first of all, for this one, the umami comes from bacon. And the sauce is rich because of the, uh, the fat from bacon. And the slightly burnt soy sauce flavor, it just gives a nice, amazing flavor to the pasta. Um, once again, this is rich, but the shiso leaves are going to uh, they're gonna make the pasta nice and refreshing. So it's, you're going to be able to enjoy the pasta until the end. So this is olive oil pasta uh, flavored with soy sauce. So the last one, we're going to make some um, cold pasta. So over here. So first, I'm going to make the sauce. Um, this is soy sauce, 20 grams, vinegar, and this can be like citrus, it come, can come from citrus as well, you can use lemon or lime as well, olive oil, and sugar, and some finely chopped up onion. And mix this up, and the sauce is ready. Next, uh, I'm going to boil the pasta. We're going to use a thin pasta. Uh, we're going to cook this for a minute, and then we're going to wash and chill the, the pasta. So one minute. Let's just spoon up these guys. And for the toppings, we're going to use, uh, it can be anything as well. We're going to use tuna sashimi, avocados, uh, tomatoes, and some prawn, both prawns. So the pasta is almost ready. And then I'm going to go to the sink, going to wash and chill the noodles, sorry, pasta. So I want to make the pasta nice and silky, so I want to remove all the starch from the outside. Um, sorry, one thing that I forgot uh, to put into the sauce, she still leaves in here as well. And then I'm going to put in the pasta into the sauce and mix it up.
So make sure the chisel leaves are evenly around the pasta. And once again, I'm going to use the tong and ladle to nicely plate it into the bowl. And for the toppings, I'm just going to like lightly mix it up and just on the side. And we have the leftover sauce, so I'm just going to pour this over the toppings and for this uh, we're going to garnish the top with some seaweed and some shiso leaves again so this is how to make a uh, cold pasta Japanese style um, this is great for summer um, there's some vinegar in the sauce to make it nice and refreshing. And uh, shiso leaves, once again, it has a nice minty taste to it, nice and refreshing as well. And, but it's still filling because of the toppings on the side. You get protein from prawns, uh, tuna sashimi, and the avocado gives a nice um, buttery taste to that pasta. So it's nice and uh, filling as well. So even during the summer, when you're not even uh, when you're not that hungry, you can probably still have this. So these are, are the three Japanese pasta that I can uh, recommend. Uh, these are very popular. Um, if you go to like a Western style restaurant in Japan, they probably have one of these pasta. Um, so yeah, um, if you can find the ingredients, um, maybe give it a try. Oh, there's a question. What's the red thing? Um, that's mentaiko, that's a cod roll, um, it's often paired up with rice in Japan, um, it's packed with umami and it's just like cured with salt and chili, so it's a little bit salty and um, spicy at the same time. Oh, uh, we have a question where it says, um, does it work with 25 or 30% moisture dough, like Hakata noodles? Yes, um, the lowest I tried was 25% and it works completely um, it, it works perfect for Hakata noodles so uh, that was just our take like first take on the pasta like which is like of course like most popular um, noodles in the world but uh, um, you know uh, we're coming from a like, Japanese background Japanese noodle background so um, this is just our first take so you know we may um, do another class at some pasta um, or like you know we'll do like um, a whole classes on like you know certain topic like you know as like specific as like um, yakisoba or like um, sukemen um, or other things other noodle types and uh, for those really like quite interested in like um, well like learning about like other things that we could teach um, please um, send us the request for email for like or any. Um, Instagram, like, or, you know, we do Facebook. Um, and then for those of you like, who like the class, please hit the like button, uh, make sure. And then um, for those of you like, who are interested in like, learning about um, other things, uh, or like knowing, about, knowing more about like, our company, like what we do, um, please uh, subscribe to our like, YouTube channel, um, the Noodle. And so, um, we are going to be doing like more and more of this kind of class and then like you know we hope to see you guys um, soon in the next class and, uh, for today thank you very much for watching and thank you for joining us for this uh, class thank you we'll see you in the next class thank you bye bye